to a period where I was like, I'm done with men. I never really believed in dating. What's the biggest difference between this marriage that you guys are in that's so easy? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I could go on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about a power couple. Beautiful thing called marriage now because this is a couple that works on set together and works out together. <laughs> we have found you guys both, Michael J. White and Gillian White. Welcome to Hardly Initiated. Why would you even try to be with me again to just lose me again? How does it feel when you hear your husband say that. It makes me feel very special to know that I have my husband 100%. Why do I think that all relationships require all this work? Stop it. You're bullshitting yourself. I thought that the sex life was something that you just had to give up. <laughs> <laughs> I encourage my brother, just don't look at this and everything. You gotta see. Welcome to Hardly Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson. Here with another episode of my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. Let me tell you, man. So it's very important that we showcase black love. Okay? Oh, my goodness. So something very special for the audience today, and I, and I think we're going to really take this one to the next level. I mean, in a world where our timelines are filled with the latest divorces, mm -hmm. it is important that we even see, have the aesthetic of this beautiful couple that we are bringing here today. Gotta have something to aspire to. Gotta have something to aspire to. You gotta, you gotta actually see it work because the, the, we were all becoming cynics nowadays. But I'm talking about, I could call them a power couple. I could even call them a powerful couple because this is a couple that works on set together and works out together. <laughs> and I'm talking about has been doing this beautiful thing called marriage now for over a decade. We have found you guys both Michael J. White and Gillian White, welcome to Hardly Initiated. It is a blessing to have you. Thank you so much Thanks for having me here. Yeah. Absolutely, guys. Man, it is a tremendous honor to have both of you. I'm a fan of both of your works. Big fans. Most of you have probably know them from the films um, that you've seen them on, whether it's film or television, they're all over the place and have been doing it for a very long time. Uh, but they also got some game in this love and relationship space that I'm very excited to get into. They was already leaking a bunch of secrets before the show started. <laughs> so y'all might find out some real cool things about this amazing pair that we have here. But first, before we get into it, we have been sponsored by someone very special. Ryan, tell the people about our episode sponsor. Guys, listen, Harley in Love Dating Deck. Let me tell you, most people are too afraid to get back out there and start dating. So Tyshawn and I work very hard to put over 100 open-ended questions that'll take your game night, your love night to the next level. And this is the thing, you don't gotta worry about where to go, what to do, all you gotta do, mm -hmm. pick any place, pull out these cards, and I promise you, the rest is a wrap. There you have it. That's all you need. It's in the description. You can have one. And I actually want to send both of you guys a dating deck, too. Because to. word on the street is if you're married, you still got to be doing that dating thing. Is, is that true? Oh, yeah. We definitely have our little date nights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just, you know, what we do anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, yeah. it's natural and normal for us. <laughs> Incredible, incredible. So, I just like looking at them. It's like, <laughs> I, I can just imagine when, when y'all are out and people just see y'all, they're like, oh, oh look, yeah, look at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a fact. Let me tell you, we're going to have a fun conversation today because, you know, we do a lot of research before the shows. We want to make sure we all the way prepared. And we found an incredible letter that Mike put together for us. Um, it was actually this was a uh, minute ago. This was like I want to say ten years ago. It was a while ago. Yeah, and I saw this on I saw this online. Apologies to all my exes. You remember that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this is the thing. Oh, well, we I, I, <laughs> I can imagine. And I was checking this out, right? And some some of the things that you know, and I'm gonna read a few of these things. But basically, in the letter, you detail some uh, M Michael Jai detail some of your previous thoughts. And, you know, just generally about some of your dating experiences in the past, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just read a couple of things from here. I believed all women were crazy, and the only choice a man had was to decide exactly how much crazies he's willing to deal with to sustain a relationship. I think a lot of guys currently think that right now. Yeah, right? Oh, absolutely. I simply didn't love my exes in the capacity their spirits knew organically needed to be loved, okay? 
I believe women nowadays have learned to settle for what's familiar to love. And this is the thing. I'm going to kind of fast forward. But basically, you talked about all these things that you had experience with, but it came down to Gillian, crediting Gillian, okay, who helped you gain a better understanding of how to cater to a woman as a man. So that's what we want to talk about. So, you know, it's interesting, too, because we, me and Ryan was talking about this in private, but, you know, all of us men, especially the men that attracted some ladies throughout the journey, we all got a little like this. We need to write apologize <laughs> to our exes because along to fi- along the way of finding that one woman, you probably raised a whole lot of hell on the way to, you know, finding this woman and probably develop, you know, a bit of a cynical mindset as well. Absolutely. But I-, I want you to I want you to help us out here, you know, because what inspired you even to, you know, write that letter in the first place? Well, I mean, it's it's self-evident. I was surprised. I like I said in the in the letter, I I thought it was an impossibility. I I never w- had somebody I wanted to see every day and like, you know, and um even holding hands to me. Like I was just one of those guys that was like, you know, I hold I find something to do with that damn hand. I'm like, yeah, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. But you know, I just thought maybe there's something missing in me. And or there's this thing that di- didn't uh, coexist that you're never going to give a woman the type of attention that she really desires until I was in a in this situation where this was someone I wanted to see every single day. I never got tired. I never had that point, even to this day, where I say, you know, I just want some time on my own to be by myself. It's never happened. Uh, and I go, oh, shoot, that's what they want. Because I'm like, you know, I was that guy that was saying, we, I just talked to you like a half an hour ago. Why are we talking again? Or, or right. I, just talk to you. I talked to you yesterday. Why are you always talking to me? <laughs> but, <laughs> that's, that's a little harsh. But, but, I, but, 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 but I, I know a lot of guys could identify with that. And Facts. I, and I got to say, I wasn't one that, I wasn't somebody who had to h- try hard for women. You know, I I did pretty much, I was pretty darn successful at an early age. So I do, you know, I was, you know, more on the other side. It was the spoiled type or whatever. Thought I was pretty set in my ways. But till till, um, I knew that uh, she was bringing more to the table than I was. And for me to not wreck the possibility, I had to step up. I had to be the guy that I knew I always could be to rationalize being with her. Now that, sound, that might sound a little strange, but deep down, you know, we know what the truth is. I mean, I, you know, I, I basically had some work to do. Um, and so when I did that and I, and I felt like the man who really deserved her, everything else fell into place. I, I couldn't imagine that my life would just be that, every aspect of my life would just be greater. And it's something that nobody ever told me. And so I'd be remiss not to share that with others, especially people who grew up like I did, who, you, who thought, you know, very cynically. And, um, but it, it, was, it was something about um, me knowing that there wasn't any kind of ceiling to what we had. Others, you know, it's like you can kind of see this ain't working or this will work to a certain point. So I didn't invest as much in it. But I knew if I didn't invest in this one, uh, I, I was not going to be, be a happy person. Because the thing is, we, we had connected before, 28 years ago. And, and you know, in my running around and our, our lives, we, we separated. But deep down, I knew, wait a second. Let, let, let me be real. That was th- th- what I felt there. You don't, you don't get many, many chances at that. Uh, what it is, is like, I always say, okay, bro, you know your best friends, right? You got best friends that you can talk to every day and it don't feel like no work. Then you got your friends that you, you talk to once a month and that's normal. And you got friends you talk to a few times a year. It's cool. But imagine that that once a month friend moving in with you. 
Now it's going to be work because that's not the natural state of things. Right. But, you know, which I can say, a lot of relationships have that, that similarity. And see, you, a lot of people may be in a relationship with somebody that would be naturally a couple times a week connection. I happen to be married to my best friend that I see every day. I, I would say that's the biggest difference. Uh, so it doesn't, when, you know, we, we get embarrassed sometimes when people talk about how marriages work and it really isn't for us. Well, they say it's hard. Yeah, yeah. It's not really hard work for us. So we kind of feel weird like when people bring that up because it's not a lot of work for us because we're just best friends living together, living our lives, living our dreams, working together. And so when people are like, yeah, marriage is hard work, it's this and that, you got to put time into it. And we're kind of like, uh, yeah, it's not, not, not for us. And and we're blessed. I think, because yeah. Of that, you know yeah. What I mean? Cause you know, like one of the things is like, I, I have more fun with her than any of my male friends ever. We have a ball. It's, it's like, it's always a damn sitcom. And, and when you got that kind of thing, you don't keep, you know, ego doesn't come into play, all that other kind of stuff. You don't ever look at things, you know, willfully in a darker perspective. And and it feels like, like I say, no work. And, and part of that is just given, you know, given your, the person you're with the same leeway that you would give your best friend, you know, you don't so, all that stuff, yeah. you know, close to you. I, I think that's, that's really encouraging to hear that. And a lot of us men, especially are trying to work out of that mindset. Cause a lot of us have just resigned to this is how it's going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to date her until it just completely runs out, whether that's three months, a couple of years, whatever happens, happens, but we know eventually it's going to come to a close because of those feelings. And, and I'm very curious, Gillian, because women are very, very smart. I mean, much more emotionally equipped than us men. So things, you can see these things from a mile away. So this is my question. Did you have any idea or I guess an inkling that you know, Michael probably had this kind of attitude or, or mental mindset coming into the relationship. And did you have any idea that you would have such an impact on him to completely change the way he considers relationships? Well, um, like, like you said, we started dating uh, 28 years ago. And then, of course, we, we separated because of just so much going on in our lives. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. When we got back together, I can say because of certain things that he said to me, I can absolutely say that I knew I had that impact in, on his life. Um, I always tell people one of the things he said to me, because I had, I had gone through some relationship trauma and stuff like that. So I kind of was on the fence too. I didn't know if I even wanted to be with him. I wasn't sure if, you know, getting with a man who is an actor, good looking, got, got a little, you know, the fitness thing, the body, at groupies. I was like, I don't know if I'm trying to go into that because now I got to deal with all that extra stuff. You know what I mean? And I just wasn't in that place mentally where I wanted to deal with that. Um, but there was one thing he said to me, which was, you know, look, I lost you once before and I'd be a fool to do anything to lose you again. And when he said those words, that kind of resonated with me because I was like, that's kind of true. Like, why would you even try to be with me again to just lose me again? You know, so that's when I knew I had to have had some impact on his life and just just our chemistry alone, even throughout the years, even we weren't together, we'd run into each other in New York, we'd run into each other out here and people just felt it. They knew they were like, man, y'all's chemistry is crazy. You know, so we just had this connection. We always had this connection. So I think I kind of knew and you're right. Women do see things from a mile away and we are a little bit more emotionally connected and just just know things a little deeper. But um, I, I knew when we got back together, I was like, I know this is going to work out. And this is going to be who I'm going to be with for the rest of my life. Now, <clears throat> I'm curious to know here um, from Michael, because you actually had a marriage prior to your, your current marriage. And, you know, with the mindset of, you know, this is how women are. You get into a marriage, the marriage fails, did the or at least divorce, however you describe that. Did that divorce reinforce what you already thought or, you know, take the, the, the cynical thoughts that you had further down? Or, you know, did you have um, this level of hope or desire to get remarried? Well, 
it was that's separate. Like, yeah, I was super cynical. I was super cynical even about the marriage in the first place because, um, like, well, it was a little untraditional. She she proposed to me on a Thursday. Wow. And I basically well, she proposed to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She proposed to me wow. on, on a Thursday, <laughs> and I was like, okay. Um, Let's get and we got married on the Saturday, two days later. Insane. Because wow. what it was for me, it was like marriage, marriage, whatever. If it's, uh, if this makes you work hard, then so be it. See, I was I was I was kind of questioning myself in the past. Is that a lot of women? Their their knock on me was that I they, they felt like if they left my side, that I would just move on without a problem. A lot of that was true, I was gonna say that. right? <laughs> and, and, and it's because I'm, I'm, all, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, I'm a positive thinking person. But my thing is, I feel like for the essence of a man, it's like to please your woman and to, you know, you be there as the protector, as the provider. And all that stuff. If I'm, if you're not feeling me, you, by by all means, you should be with who sustains you that way. And so, in the past, I I kind of blame myself. I said, well, maybe I made all these women feel insecure, and because I didn't uh, commit to anything. So this time, I said, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna see this relationship out for the maximum potential anyway. It's a whole lot of problems in this relationship, but if you're gonna act right, if I marry your ass, okay, let's do it. It was basically like that. And so I'm like, all right, we got married, didn't help. The problems didn't necessarily fix themselves, but I felt that if I do my part to show my commitment to making it work, maybe that'll be a, a catalyst for them to work hard at some of the problems that might have been in her court, you know? And so that's what that was about to me. So I was as cynical as ever, but never did I think and, and apply any of that to Gillian in my situation. In fact, marriage was not even important to us. We didn't even, like, he didn't even propose to me. Like, it wasn't like, we didn't do any of that traditional stuff. It was like, oh yeah, we're gonna be together forever. So we're just gonna get married. Yeah. Like it was, yeah, it was like secondary. We, we, we just knew we don't even think we didn't think about it. Like, no, it like no when somebody, somebody asked us about that. a proposal, like years later, we were like, oh no, we never even, we just knew we was going to get married. <laughs> like, it never even came yeah. up. It wasn't even like, yeah, like people are like, oh, how do people go, oh, how did he propose to you? I know it was like amazing. I'm like, no, nah, we didn't do any of that. We, we just, like, yeah. we didn't need any of that, that stuff. We knew this is it. We've both been through marriages. We've both been through, through divorce. This is it for us. Yeah, I mean, it was you know? the marriages was no comparison to what we what we had on the worst day. <laughs> <laughs> on the worst day, I mean, so yeah, I'm what like, we had was yeah. something special. It was just like, no, we we don't need all that. Him getting down on bended knee and giving me like I was like, ah. She probably laughed at me. <laughs> you would have probably laughed at me if I did something like that. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, what? why are you doing that? Get your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Let me. So, do you think th this is my question, Gillian? Because you know, I'm I'm currently in a situation where I'm 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 dating a young lady very seriously now, and you know, we laugh about it because she always trying to ask me. She always trying to go into my history about who was this woman and when was this? How did this relationship go and this and that? And look, my whole essence of that whole thing is, look, just glad you didn't know me back then, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm just glad you know this version of me at this point in time of my life. Mm. Now, do you feel the success, you know, of the relationship and the union you guys have is due to just divine timing and where Michael was at that point in time when you guys remet? Or is it just that your union is so strong that regardless of when you guys met, it would have always been this easy. You would have always had this compatibility and be able to grow where you guys are today. I think that's exactly what it would have been. Um, because like I said, even, even when we were together in the past, 
it, like I said, it was always this chemistry, it was always this connection. We both were, like we always say, we both were kind of therapists to other people. You know, we, we, neither one of us was full of drama. Like, you know, we were always trying to help other people. And because of that, we didn't put like a lot of rules and, and, and kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we didn't put just things on each other. So it was like, we liked each other so much, but it wasn't like traditional relationships where it's like, you know, you got to be this way. You got to be that way. Um, you can only date me. You got you know, you know, just that kind of the rules or parameters, I should say, you know what I mean? We didn't have that. And because we, he was so nice and I was so nice. We kind of just, we always said we out nice to each it, other. It is, it's something I regret. We regret for my, it. I regret it for regret all it. this time <laughs> because if we had really dug deep, because we were having such a good time. Yeah. If we had dug deep and knew what we wanted for each other's lives, we 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 would have been we would have been married twenty eight years by now. Wow. Mm. It's I, it's not like we, I wasn't ready. We both uh, were ready. Yeah, we yeah. both have always had that kind of thing in us that we we know what we wanted. We wanted someone to be with that we could be committed to, and just fully be in love and have a wonderful relationship with. We always wanted that. Yeah, I mean, you you were lucky to have that kind of chemistry with somebody in in a lifetime. And so, I mean, I, you know, I just woke up and was like, what the hell? You know what I mean? Why, why do I think that all relationships require all this work? And I would veer from what we had going into what I was used to, which was like, you know, just drama and just yeah, extra. And just yeah. all this stuff where, we you know. We both did that. Yeah. And, and so it, it, it's like, that's the one thing I have to forgive myself about that I didn't delve into seeing what we could be early on. And that's, my, that's, that's on me because I was running around, you know, I was doing what I'm, I thought I was supposed to do, but it was a, a you know, a game of numbers, right? Dating this one, dating, but it didn't, didn't really apply myself. So that, that was in essence, a lot of bullshit time telling myself it's about numbers, but not investing enough time into any one person to find out, right? That's something I have to live with and have to deal with because this would have happened a long time ago had I delved into what we could have been. Now, now I want to ask you because it's a lot of fear around that though for a lot of guys, especially a lot of successful guys. Mm -hmm. Because to, I mean, you talk, and I'm sure you've been in these conversations, it may not make sense to them because when you're talking about why should they work so hard to reach this level of success and now only be committed and relegated to this one woman when essentially they can, you know, have, I can answer that. Uh, easy. What's can, the benefit? I can what's the benefit? Easy, Cause I wouldn't be where I am without her. Wow. When you, when you think about your, your, your partners that once you're in the room together, you vibe on a level that you inspire each other. You come up with thoughts you normally never had. You vibrate on another level, right? What we were able to do, in just the short years, we, I mean, we've, we've made history in a whole lot of ways, a whole lot of ways, and it's only getting better. So that's the answer. That's the short yeah. answer to it. Cause I know when guys talk like that, a lot of it is coming out of fear, right? Stop it. Fact yeah. is it don't, it don't make no, if, if you ain't better with that person than without that person, there you go. Don't do it. Mm. She ain't better with you in her life, and you ain't better with her. With her, you know, if she ain't better with you in her, yeah. it don't make no sense. But but it is like when you are vibrating together, when you are working together, man, ain't nothing better. You will never go further than with than when if you're being with the right person. Then you put family on top of it. You know, motivation is more about more than a more than about yourself. I think that's, that speaks to our nature as men. You know, we will, we will put our lives on the line for the love of our family. So, so that, that's the thing, that's us operating in our full capacity. You go ahead, single man, and feel like you're operating in your best capacity as a single man. Stop it, you're bullshitting yourself. You know, mm, I, I like that. <laughs> Look, you got me motivated because I think me, me and Ty missing. Yeah, we, we need to get some wives. Guys want to charge like you're only. Yeah, what what part of you is telling yourself that? You know what I mean? A, a, a lot, because when you 
we were we were boys at one time, right? And we a lot of us were boys probably saying, I can't wait to be the head of my own household. I'm going to have this, this, this. I, a lot of us as boys don't say, yeah, I'm going to be a player and I'm just going to have women all over the place. No. Nobody says that. Nobody says that. We get older and we, we get in our defenses and, and try to say, no, no, I'm I, you know, almost like, no, I didn't get fired. I quit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, no, this is on our mm. terms. I don't need that. But we got to really listen to our deep selves and, and know that that's a fear sometimes creating the, 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 uh, the exit and looking for that other shoe to drop. But when a lot of us, we got to be real, real honest with ourselves. What do we want? Do we really want, well, you know, somebody to come home to that you can't wait to see that, that you can't wait to share your day with and hear about their day and, and build together. I feel like I've never been more of a man than when I was married to this woman. Just see now, now Gillian, because you know, it's a, a lot of the terminology is thrown around, especially in the media, you know, the helpmate, you know, kind of whatever this traditional role is. And the thing is, women, they want to be in your position. They want a man who has a high level of reverence and admiration for him, a man who's willing to put his life down, you know, on the line for him, a man who is really just <clears throat> deeply in love with them, right? So what do you do as a woman to position yourself like that? Like what, what is the, the, the formula to be this woman that is not just worthy of it, not just attracts it, but can actually, once she gets it, she continues to be able to, to build upon it? I think it's, it, it's a lot of things, but I think with me is that I've just always been myself. You know, I feel like so many women feel like they have to, you know, when people start to, you, you feel like you have to um, act a certain way, dress a certain way, uh, do this, do that. Like you have to be this perfect person for that guy. You know what I mean? But sometimes it's just good to just be your damn self because if you're putting on this front and you're acting like this, you're acting like that, you think they're not, that facade is going to fall down at some point. It's going to crumble. And then they're going to see who you really are. And then they're going to go, damn, that's not, you know what I mean? What happened to that woman in the beginning? I don't do that. Like from the very beginning, I've always been myself. And I'm like, and I think I would say that's, you fell in love with me. You didn't fall in love with a facade. You didn't fall in love with something I was uh, representing. representing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and I think it's imp so important that when you come into a relationship and you are yourself, that man falls in love with you. He doesn't fall in love with a representation. He doesn't fall in love with who you're trying to be to make him love you. It's like, you gonna love me for who I am or we're just not gonna be together, you know? And so with, and, and, and like also, you know, me, I have no ego, he has no ego. I don't, I don't bring anything to this relationship other than I'm gonna support my husband and I'm, a, and I'm gonna be there for him and I'm gonna love him and I'm just gonna do everything in my power, still being myself to make him know how much I love him and how much I'm there for him. And like Mike said, we have only elevated in our relationship. It's only gone like this because of that support, that love. And it's such a 50, 50 thing. It's never, it's never like, it's never imbalanced. Um, and I think a lot of women just need to know you got to just be yourself. Just, just stop, stop the front. I don't care if you, if your, your skin looks janky, your hair looks janky. I don't care what it is like, let that man see that of you and let him fall in love with that because those are our flaws. And like we always say, your flaws is what people fall in love with. You know, it's not, nobody's, nobody's gonna fall in love with something that's all fake and, and not, and not who, who's truly you, you know? And I think that's really important. I think um, a lot of respect comes from that. When you could just be yourself, speak your mind, be who you are, and not just, you know, not try to be something that you're not. Yeah, you know, I want to clarify something just so, so it doesn't get confused. Mm -hmm. When she says 50-50, it's kind of like uh, the ego is the 50-50 thing. Like, mm -hmm. But if you if, if you have a strength in something oh, and the other true. person yeah. doesn't, it, it, whatever, it, it, it could be 80-20 at that point. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's not like, oh, you know, you abide by this certain overall rule that everything's split. 
it, it's only yeah, it's only definitely 50, didn't mean that. Yeah, it's, it's only <laughs> as far as ego is concerned, right? Because like my my thing is like if if you're if she's better at something than me, then she she does, or or if she's more passionate about something, then she chooses. You know what I'm saying? And we're like so, that. Yeah, like so, yeah. like here's a little thing, you guys. Are, like he sews. You know, oh, no, but but I'm saying he knows how to do things like that. A perfect example: we were on a, going to a red carpet event. I had a wardrobe malfunction. I was like, "Oh my god, what am I going to do? I'm I'm stressing now because I'm like, I don't know, I'm aware. I was going to wear this. I don't know what to wear now." And he's like, "Babe, just take your dress off here. Let me let me fix it for you." And he did that, but like. To me, that's dope. I'm sorry. Like, I would never, like, because you know, I'm just saying there's certain things that I wouldn't expect him to be able to do. And he did that for me, fixed it for me. Now we're back to business, you know? And it's, mm-hmm. and it's, and it's just a quality that, like I said, he has certain strengths and I lean on him for that. I have strengths and he leans on it for, uh, leans on me for that. And, and that's what that, that's what I mean by that balance. Not so much that 50 50, but just it's the balance. What yeah. do you want to say? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> but she taking shots. For- <laughs> you, know, you, you ain't got no money, right? And I used to buy things. That oh, yeah, was, oh, yeah. I used to get buy like things that was like resell things. But I, you know, when you didn't have no money, like you you sell stuff. And I always had. I look. I could look fly as hell. But but, but believe me, there was like three safety pins hidden from everybody's view <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> so, so that's I, where his skills I, came I adopted from. some skills on, you know, making stuff look right. Because <laughs> I had, and plus I didn't fit off the rack, so I had to know how to alter yeah. my own clothes. You know? But, you know, and that's just an example. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, you know it's, yeah. just, it's just we lean on each other for, it's never, it's never any competition, or I'm better, or I know more. It's never that with us. It's we lean on each other for our strengths. And, you know, if one is weak, weaker than the other and something, you know, we know the other one has our back. Wow. So it's interesting, though, that you, you know, both of you guys, it seems like y'all, y'all lives almost parallel in this way where you're both actors. You know, fitness is very important to you. Uh, you both got married. You both divorced. And now you both ended up right back together in this way. And if you, what's the biggest difference between this marriage that you guys are in that's so easy, that's so successful, than the previous marriage that we could say failed? What's the biggest difference? Oh, jeez. I could go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hours about oh, the differences. Goodness. Yeah, that's, but, that's um, the big, what's the biggest? We don't argue. Yeah, that's. Yeah, well, we understand each other. Yeah, yes, but it's we, just, we get each other. Yeah, yeah, we get each other, and I think that's so. And that that encompasses a lot. But we just get each other. So we really don't. And I know people like I, we hate. This is another thing we hate saying. We don't argue. And I know that sounds weird. And people are like, yeah, right. No. We don't. But it's because we get each other. So not saying that we agree on everything. But we understand each other. So if there are differences in our thoughts, we talk and then it's like, oh, yeah, I get it. Okay, I see your perspective. I see your perspective. Okay, all good. It's, and, it's, and it's just and it's just easy. It's just none of it's, that. It's very similar to yeah. how much do you argue with your best friend. Uh, and, you know, you don't usually do that because you can talk about anything, even harsh stuff, and, and laugh about laugh it. Laugh about it at the end. It's easy, you know, because you know, ain't nobody really taking it that deep. Yeah, so that's that's really what it what it is. Uh, yeah, like we we really it's 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 crazy. Like I said, we like she was saying that we don't like to even mention the fact that we don't argue, and it's not like we you know try to avoid it. So it's it's just like it just happens to be the way it is. Like we we have a damn good time, um, and then any differences is like it's dealt with a very. I don't know. Like we just talk it out with humor. Yeah, <laughs> we just talk time. it out and end up yeah. laughing. But I think another thing when you're um, in regards to your question is um, the competition thing. I know I kind of touched on that a minute ago, but don't you like? There's no competition with us. I think I feel like in so many relationships, it's so much ego on both sides that everything. It's like this is this is your this is my teammate. It's not my competitor. And I feel like in so many relationships, people always want to be the one that's right. They want to be the one that's, that's 
I, I'm right. And if somebody points out that maybe you might be wrong, people get defensive. They don't want to hear that somebody saying, no, you're wrong. They, no, no, I'm not. And then it just starts all this back and forth stuff. Yeah. That's not, it's, it's not, it's not that way with us. I if, love being wrong because every time I'm wrong, I learn something new. You know, just, <laughs> no, it's, it's just that, that this is my teammate. So mm -hmm. we're going to, whatever it is, we're going to work it out so we can win. You know, what we say, we're like, like, like Kobe and Shaq back in the day, right? <laughs> the Lakers. <No. laughs> Kobe and Shaq was not like. No, 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 no. They, right. That's toxic. They, they, That's right, toxic. Right. They, <laughs> they were still winning, though. Sorry. <laughs> winning together, teammates. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me ask you guys this, because um, I think this is important, because the majority of our audience is ladies. I would say about 65% ladies, okay? Now, in this this letter, okay, Michael says, I believe women nowadays have learned to settle for what's familiar to love. So, Gillian, I'm, I'm going to ask you, do you think that that statement still resonates today? Yeah, absolutely. I think women settle all the time. Um, they, they, and they settle, like you said, they settle with what's familiar. They settle with what feels comfortable. You know, and sometimes um, comfortable is not exactly what might be right for you. You know, sometimes you, 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 so a lot of times women will get into relationships. I even speak for myself. I've been in relationships where I just settle in because I'm like, ah, it seems okay. You know, it's, it's not that bad. Um, I'm not getting beat on. I'm not, you know, like these, 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 these major things. And it's like, so I'll just deal with it. I'll just deal with this relationship. But you're not truly happy. You're not really happy. And I think a lot of women need to understand that, you know, you have to find your happiness. And if you're not truly happy with someone, you got to make that decision to go, you know, this is not right for me. And I, and you know, and I, and I feel like that has a lot to do with settling. People settle and you're not always happy. You just do it just because it's like, eh, maybe this is, this is what's okay right now. You know, might not be anything else better out there. Let me just, let me just deal with this. That's not, that's not a way to be in a relationship. It's not healthy and it, and it actually wastes a lot of years of your life or time, you know? Yeah, I, 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 mean, I think people have to, have to um, avoid some of the traps. I mean, if you notice, if there's anything that you might notice about us is that we're a little unconventional with certain things. Like, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay. So with uh, like the getting on the knee and the, the, the date, I didn't, we didn't, I never really believed in dating. I just say, just be who you are from day one, right? You got to have that courage to do that. And then because there's so, such a list of behaviors that you got to be watch, you got to watch out because how much of these things are you sacrificing who you are just to follow a, a paradigm? You know, so when does that stop? You know, you got to have the, the point where you, you've got to just be yourself completely. As, as Gillian said, is if you, you know, a lot of us are more about our flaws than our attributes. You have to be, you have to have a courage to be, hey, this is, these are my flaws. Put them out there so you can deal with them for one thing. And don't, don't try to be perfect. But so there's this, this paradigm that people watch. So you have to do this and you do this on, and by a certain date and, and then, and there's this structure. And it's like, when are you going to drop that and be who you are? and do what you want to do and not follow a structure of what most relationships follow, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So then because you, 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 you hide yourself, then you, you deny the person the chance to love you. You have, you are a, a, a conglomeration of your strengths your, and your flaws, everything, you know, you, you cannot possibly hold it against somebody who doesn't love you when you've never shown who you are. Yeah. Let me tell you, that's people, so true. People just have to have the courage to be themselves and to step off the, the Ferris wheel and, and say, hey, you know, this is me. I'm going to navigate this direction. Or they shouldn't be surprised when their outcome is similar to other negative outcomes. Mm. And it seems like as a culture, we're moving further and further away from that because right. it's very easy to get away from your authentic selves 
when you consider, you know, we're able to hide behind a digital wall on social media, Absolutely. we're able to create yeah. a persona yeah. on Instagram, on these other profiles of who people think we are, who we want mm -hmm. them to perceive of, uh, per perceive us as, you know, we even in this weird, you know, even kind of body morphing <laughs> generation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> of, about that all the time, because I'm like, why are you, and, and I'm not, okay. It's just something that bothers me. Like when I see a woman who is uh, using Photoshop to make her waist this big and a butt this big and a boobs, but I'm like, you know, somebody's gonna see you in person one day, right? Like they're gonna, right. they're gonna see you outside of social media. So you're getting all these likes because of what you're making yourself look like. But are you gonna stay in your house for the rest of your life? Like nobody's gonna see you outside the club or at the grocery store or in Target. Like they're gonna see you and they're gonna say that she, you don't look like that. You know, it's it's too much of that now. It's too much of everybody trying to be perfect. And then that yeah. person that is attracted to that ain't ain't attracted to you. Yeah, they're attracted you to know? what you've presented. Yeah, so how how do you win with that? That's a, a no-win situation. Yeah. Man, let me tell you, uh, that's that's very. I'm, I'm happy that you guys are bringing um, voice to the fact that authenticity is one of the most important ways for us to authentically and genuinely know whether or not we are compatible and can be together. And I'm also happy that y'all are also bringing these very, you know, these you know unconventional values. Well, I don't want to say unconventional values, but you know, your unconventional ways of finding love because sometimes it looks a little different, right? Like you don't need the big fancy ring, yeah. the big fancy proposal and all of these different things to have a successful relationship. I actually saw something I was interested in online. There's actually a study that was done that said the more, the, the more expensive the wedding, there's actually a chart that shows the least likelihood the wedding, mm -hmm. uh, the marriage actually lasts. I've actually the seen more money. Yeah, see, brother, see, that's, <laughs> see, that's one of those things. Well, let, let me, let me see. These statements. The, but the thing is, is what the marriage is based off of, whether it, that's the thing, the, the message is, should be, I think. Mm -hmm. It's what the marriage is made, what, what it's based off of, what, what it was made. We, we have very expensive rings. We happen to have very expensive rings. We had a, a wedding, if you looked at it, our Thai wedding looked like coming through to America. <laughs> so, so we basically, but what, what we did have is the love that, the same love that was sustained uh, of a, a McDonald's parking lot wedding, you know? Mm. And so, kind of, kind of like we did both. We had the we had the little secret wedding, yeah, little secret and we had the wedding. big one. But <laughs> but it's really about that. I would hate people to think that, oh, if we have a, a big wedding, then we're doomed. Or if we have a small wedding, then we're gonna make it. You should just drop all of that. If you if you have an authentic marriage and you have a and you have a love. you have a chemistry, because bro, I tell you what, last chemistry. You can see people that you ain't seen in 10, 20 years, run into them and you got the same damn chemistry. You're funnier with that person or that person pisses you off in, in three seconds flat. Chemistry lasts. Chemistry lasts. And if you got chemistry with the woman that you, you're you bound to or the man you're bound, whatever the situation, that shit lasts. You know what I mean? Whether, you're, whether your wedding is expensive or not. So it's just these, you know, these percentages and all that type of stuff. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of that that goes on. But Statistics. Then, yeah, but then there's a, right. there's a there's a mindset that's there's already a, an assigned image when you even go into that. So what do you what are you trying to prove? There's something that's <laughs> trying to be proven in the beginning, you know, before the statistic. But really, you know, it comes down to real simple, you know, be who you are, man. And like I say, you know, if there's anything, authenticity. It's so important. Just it's the most important. So important. 
Oh, okay. future wife. You yeah. can already hear here. Like, uh, it sounds like we getting married in a, a courtroom. Right. right? So, <laughs> keeping it low hey, budget. Just keeping it low budget. Just taking advice from the from the whites. Well, right? Listen, speaking of that, Michael, you got you to gotta help us out. You know, both Tashawn and I are, are single, mm -hmm. eligible young men that, of course, we would be so lucky to get a beautiful wife who is committed and caring and loving like yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. And a lot is put on acquisition. I still remember my uncles teaching me, you know, going to the mall or dropping me off at the movies, showing me how to get as many phone numbers as possible, right? So can you tell us, okay, how exactly, once you get a good woman, how do you cater to her? How, what do I need to do to make sure that after I get one, I'm able to keep her satisfied throughout the, the lifetime of the relationship. Well, first of all, does she deserve it? I'll be like, this ain't one, <laughs> it ain't one like road. Like, you know, it's like, okay. Uh, but, you know, just find out who she is. And so even sometimes, I know because I was a single man and I, I was always looking for this my entire life. So even when I was running around dating, that's what I was looking for. And sometimes I'd have to trick women into to letting me know who they really were, not their representative, who they really were. Because they would be part of that whole damn matrix themselves. You know, I, you know, I, I, I just couldn't get behind just investing in someone's, uh, I don't know, them, them trying to, a lot of us try to create the image that they want to be and not who they truly are, all right? So, I mean, especially like, look at look at, look at my business, <laughs> you know? There's so many people in this industry that get a chance to be their alter ego and then have people fo follow through. But now with social media, so many people are being who they wish they were. So you might have to dismantle somebody's bloated image of who they really are not knowing who they really are because they're they're in the in the throes of trying to represent their alter ego they're you know they're so that's a little more difficult nowadays to dismantle that and you got to be kind of like a private detective to do it so my thing my thing is yeah uh, and I would encourage our brothers, don't just look at the looks of somebody. So many people just, because there's this image and that this beautiful woman fits that image and you, and you don't look at who she is. And because she's, she's born this way and then behaves as such. That's just like, imagine, oh, I'm bigger and stronger. I realize when I raise my voice, people listen, they back down. Well, is that going to benefit me? Or is that going to weaken me? Because I just, I, I have a crutch. And a lot of beautiful women, and I've dated a lot of beautiful women who were paper thin underneath. Now, Gillian was something completely different. So I knew there was something way beneath her beauty, and it wasn't about her beauty. That wasn't a crutch that she was using. And so that's something I always, because I said I always wanted this when I first met her. She had a gorgeous friend that was just kind of, what's up? And I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> who's your friend over there? <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I would encourage guys, you know, because I'm luckily I've dated a lot of women. A lot of some of the most beautiful women, I'm thinking, God, well, she's probably a psycho because she, she probably hasn't had to work on her personality because everybody's busy bowing down and kissing her ass. Mm. You know what I mean? So to me, they were working, <laughs> they were working in a negative thing. I'm like, show me you ain't a damn psycho because the world will, will make you one because they just look at you and go, yes, you're right. You're right. Oh baby, let me shower you with this. And, and then, and then they, they have this bloated image of themselves. And they ain't bringing nothing but what they look like. And I'm like, you empty as hell. You know, so they, they, I've never been impressed by them women. And a lot of them women were just, I had as friends that was like, damn, what's wrong with me? You don't want to know. But you, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so, so 
I, I had the benefit of not falling into that stuff, you know, but I encourage my brothers, you got to look deep. To, you not just don't look at this and everything. You got to see, do they make you laugh? Are they good listeners? Are they nurturers? Are, are, are they, are they uh, empathetic? The things that you want you, your, your wife and the mother of your children to be. I don't give a damn what she looks like. That don't last. But what what last did we said? Chemistry. And you only find that chemistry with somebody being who who they are. I'm I'm really just glad to hear both of you guys. I'm I'm not gonna lie, especially you, Michael, as a successful brother, really encouraging men. You know, the importance of getting you a wife and a woman, hmm. and and really able to really logically, because the way you broke it down, very logically expressing the benefits of being with a woman one woman you know for the rest of your life to deal with i think that's so important because our culture is is glorifying the opposite end of the spectrum and even as i speak to you know a lot of young men you know my age even successful men that might be mature i think we're forgetting what the benefits are and even when i speak and ask a man who's been married and who is enjoying his life in marriage, because that's a big difference, I get a new benefit every single time. And it even makes more and more sense to me because I can't lie myself and say that I didn't start forgetting mm. just being in the world, you know, being somebody who was um, a, a son of divorce, you know, and constantly is entrenched in, you know, uh, the, the, the failures of relationships over and over and over again, seeing it. And, you know, even in the single life, you in this toxic single life, you know, that can even become the norm to you. So hearing again, you reinforce why it's important for us to get us a woman, especially a man of your caliber, of your prestige is, is very important. So I do appreciate you um, coming up on here and, and speaking for the men in that way. Yeah, I got to tell you something. And I know we hadn't touched on this, but this is, it's something that looms overhead that I think we need to touch on. Um, Cause when I say this doesn't feel like work and when I say that I'm in the best position and happiest than I've ever possibly been, that's an understatement. And one of the things that we, th we talk about being single men, and I'm gonna just throw this out there. Fact is I dated famous women before I was even famous. I dated, and I don't, I don't want to, you know, throw out names. Some people know some names. I've gotten women that, and gotten women to where, where, like, I was dating 14 at one time. And being pretty much pretty honest, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, all right, number 12. So, um, <laughs> but, 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 but on, the, on the real, we could joke about this, you know? Oh but, the, but the fact is, when when we were together, I I wish I invested the time that that I I did because we were having such a good time. But what what I, what I really want to touch on is this, and I don't know if you're going to hear many people say this because I swear I wish I knew this growing up. I've had women when my friends were like, "Oh my God." How does it get better than that? You dating this and that. It's no comparison to my life now. I'm not saying this in any kind of bullshit capacity. When I say, just even on it, on just the, I, I even hate that because we, we don't talk, we don't, you know, there's a certain amount where I don't like to talk about personal stuff, but even the my exploits with, the finest or whatever you might want to say with the women that I've dealt with don't nothing compare to what I have now. Nothing. I'm not bullshitting. Fact is, I feel like what the, even the sex life between my, my wife and me couldn't no memory touch what we have. It ain't even close. And I wish I knew that growing up. It ain't close. This is my worst right here. This is my best before her. And this is where we are. We out, we off the chart. 
And, you know, and I thought that the sex life was something that you just had to give up. <laughs> <laughs> Many men think that, yeah. You know, go to a place where it's boring and you just, no. Nobody, nobody could have convinced me that that even gets better. That like, wow. no, it's, it's, it's no comparison. It's kind of like, I would say this, and it's a weird um, analogy, but those of us who are fathers, right? The, the amount of love, the amount of connection that we have with our children, when the smile that your child can give you and the, just the natural connection between the two of you, you can't get that with another child and another person's child. You can't. So there is an aspect of that with sharing yourself intimately that can never be achieved with somebody other than the woman that you're in love with. And what comes with that is, is up here. It's way up here. And no memory I have with whoever this model that can touch our worst day. And that's, that's something I, I want to share. And that's no bullshit. I'm motivated, man. G <laughs> Gilly, how, how does it how, how does it feel when you when you hear your husband say that? How does that make you feel? I mean, of, of course, it makes me feel amazing, but it's <laughs> it's the same feeling that I have. You know what I mean? It's um, what what we have is it's, there's no cracks in it. You know what I mean? It's 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 so strong, and that goes on every level: the love, the respect, the the support, the sex, everything. Everything is top notch because of what we have. You know. Um, so when he says these things, of course, it makes me feel amazing. You know. I mean, you know, I'm I'm over here like. <laughs> oh, listen, they about to, they about to go but, do it right now. Course, yeah. <laughs> but, but there is another level to it where it, it makes me feel even better because it's just not, it's not something that you hear men say. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't hear men say things like that. Um, you just don't. And because I think as women, we're so used to men being players, men, you know, going out, doing things and, you know, the, the, you know, as women, we're so used to that. Um, it makes me feel very special to know that my husband, I have my husband 100%. I don't have him 80, I don't have him 70, I have him 110%. And that is the most amazing feeling in the world because, you know, I've been in relationships in the past and, you know, I know I didn't have them like this, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> And, uh, and um, subsequent to that, when I'm, she knows I got her 100%, she can let down her guards, and then she got to a place where she never been. So yeah. we're both in places where we've never been. Yeah, because that's important too, especially if the majority of your followers are women. You know what I mean? We, we as women, we've, we've been through trauma in relationships because we are such emotional creatures we're sometimes more connected in relationships than men are, you know? Mm. And when we are hurt, it is deep. It's deep, you know, it makes us feel vulnerable and, you know, um, we put up the defensive walls around us. Like we, you know, we're, I mean, I went through a period where I was like, I'm done with men. I was like, I'm done. Not saying I was going to women. I just was like, I'm just done. Like, I just, I just was like, all men are the same. I literally had that mindset. I was like, all men are the same. They all want to cheat. They all want to lie. They, they just, they're, they're, they're a mess. I'm so over men. I'd rather just be by myself. And I went through a period of that. And I know a lot of women feel that way because we have been in so many relationships where it ends with lying and cheating and the guy playing us and, you know, and it's, and it's tiresome. It's tiresome when you have to deal with that. And you just don't feel like you have the person that you think you're with a hundred percent, you know? Um, and, and for me to have reached the level, because even when I went to this relationship with Michael, I was in a very hurt place. I was very fragile. I was like, I don't want to be hurt again. I don't want to deal with any more drama. I don't want to deal with any more bullshit. And it took a lot for me to let down those walls I put up around me. Um, 
for me to open myself back up again. And I'm so glad I did, because if I didn't, I wouldn't have this. If I had kept those walls up, and I tell women all the time, you cannot treat, you know, the new man like the, like the last man, like the last man that hurt you. You can't. You have to put them in individual categories. Just because this guy did A, B, C, and D doesn't mean that this guy's going to do the same exact thing. And I think a lot of us do that. We hold on to stuff. And we, we're like, if he did that, then he's probably going to do that too. You know, and I had to let that go. And I'm not saying it's easy. It, was, it wasn't easy. It was tough for me to let down that guard. But when I did, I, I fully opened myself up to love again. And I opened myself up for him to love me fully. And, and, and look where we are now, you know? So I like to let ladies know that it wasn't like it was all freaking rainbows and butterflies for me before him. You know, it was, I went through some shit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm happy that I was able to let that go to open myself up for him. Incredible. Powerful testimony. Incredible. Right well, I'm, I'm going to be honest, man. I am, I'm blessed to have, you know, both of you guys on here. Again, even just the aesthetics of you two sitting next mm -hmm. to each other and what you've backed that with, with your story um, and your testimony has been incredible. So thank y'all for just being y'all and for coming up on here and speaking with our audience here today. Much love to both of y'all. Much love. Mm -hmm. well, thank back. you. Much love back. <laughs> absolutely guys and listen for everybody that made it this deep in the episode it's your time to contribute back to our platform if you can just please go ahead and press that subscribe button it has a tremendous impact and effect on our growth and our ability to get amazing guests and have these conversations that you just heard here today so please go ahead subscribe to the channel don't be afraid to like it as well all of that helps us grow and push this kind of energy that we need to continue to build, grow, and repair our families. Y'all, it is very serious. And I'm going to thank you, oh, amazing couple here again. Thank you so much, Michael Jai White and Gillian White. Super excited to see all the incredible things that you guys have on the way. I'm sure they're going to be on your TV screens very soon because this is a hardworking couple in real life, y'all. Right. They really put that work in. And um, listen, guys, y'all already know how we do it. Hardly initiated, we are out.